Welcome to Norska, Europe's largest aquarium. Home to over 58,000 animals, I'll be showing you what it's like, starting in the first of three sections, Journey on the High Seas. The living oceans exhibit we enter to focused on marine life often forgotten, e.g. plankton and jellyfish. The jellyfish were mesmerizing to watch, in a tank with current to keep them suspended so they don't die. We then move to Shark Kingdom with an awesome pretend shark cage, pictures and information on various sharks and of course some megalodon jaws. <laughs> Moving through to the ocean at night, there were exhibits focusing on bioluminescence and how prey can be attracted with some really cool black lights demonstrating it. There were some night feeders like these amazing leopard morays in a tank with giant groupers which can reach 2.7 meters and 300 kilometers. Here they were a measly, quote unquote, 80 kilograms with bioluminescent coral around. After moving through some visuals of oceanic travellers like whales and dolphins, we started on the deep sea, like these slender snipefish that live at 50 to 500 metres deep, as well as boarfish, the more round ones. We then got our first peek of the massive tank through the Great Fault, a seven metre high window that allows us to observe as if we were in the ocean. Before arriving at the larger viewing window, which you can just see off to the left here, we got to go under the tank in an 18 meter long glass tunnel to see up close to a lot of the species, which on this particular day included some divers, which were fun to watch. We then found ourselves in quite literally an underwater cave, which focused on an abyss part of the exhibition with animals found in more than a thousand meters of water with clever depictions of the jellies, submarines to see these animals, holograms of fish like the anglerfish, visuals of sperm whale hunting giant squid, and also what happens to whale carcasses. We then moved up to the Great Ocean Show, a 20 meter long, five meter high window to immerse into the largest tank in Europe. In the tank, there are over 40 species and it's modeled on the island of Malpelo off Colombia. We spent over 30 minutes here. To give you an idea of how impressive it is, I've got a separate video with a full 25 minutes just looking at the tank where we saw amazing things like a swimming giant moray eel and the manta ray circling. Just amazing. We then went back to the surface in this cleverly designed elevator where we could see the tank from above. It's huge, 10,000 meters cubed, which is around four Olympic swimming pools and it took six weeks to fill. The ocean water for it is filtered from the ocean nearby and purified before being returned with around 1% of the water being changed each day. That's a lot of filtration systems. <laughs> we then moved into the second section, focusing on the five oceans that make up the global ocean, starting off with a flight for islanders to share challenges facing them. In the tropical tanks, we saw some pretty fish, including a zebra shark and this really cute porcupine fish. Of course, some clownfish, some sand eels, starfish, and even seahorses. We also got to see some species that have become invasive elsewhere, such as these lionfish, which have become invasive in the med. There were also some reptiles here, such as these snappers. We got to see tuna up close in this inverted diamond and some giant mores. They breed with their mouths, which is why they open and close and look a little bit menacing. In the North Sea section, we could see crabs and different kind of fish up close, including shrimps, langoustines, and some more unusual fish like the tub garnard, which use the three spines of their pectoral fins to walk on the floor. A little bit alien looking if you ask me. We then moved to the Pacific area, which is modelled on the Californian coast with kelp, leopard sharks, which give birth to their young alive and the centre helps give birth to these. There's some really cool images of them ultrasounding their sharks. And of course, there are some famous Pacific creatures, which I will show later as they were part of a slightly different tank. Before we got to them, there was some tropical lagoon before an exhibition on the wider sea system, which was really educational, which included things like an interactive screen showing different global sea patterns, including wind, salinity, currents, temperature, boat traffic, which you could change and see live. In the coral jungle, there were lots of tanks focusing on coral, which also contained some other beautiful fish and invertebrates to ensure that coral can live well before we got to 
the final famous Pacific creature, sea lions. We were able to see them playing from an underwater tunnel. I thought they were amazingly majestic underwater. And we then moved up to see them above the land. <laughs> and it was fun to see them playing in the water and splashing around. We then came across a touch pool where we were allowed to stroke the rays. They are so soft. Although I must warn, the water was extremely cold. So after about 30 seconds, my hand felt like it was going numb. Nearby, there was also a demonstration, which included a moving floor to simulate sea conditions of what it is like to be on board a research vessel. Finally, for this section, we moved into the sunken forest, which had life such as chameleons, frogs, lizards, snakes, as well as a caiman with some huge fish around it, including the Arapaima gigas, which is two meters long, as well as the arowana with its eyes looking upwards, particularly popular in the fish trade. It was then on to the third and final section in the eye of the climate. This focuses on some of the impacts of climate change. So there were some Australian spotted jellyfish, which were invasive to other waters due to global shipping and water warming and now killing fish and mainly eating eggs in Hawaii, the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. After, there were some African penguins, which were relatively loud and smelly, but are really important as they're part of a conservation program. And they've had 23 baby penguins since 2009. Finally, there was an immersive experience in which it kind of shows you everything that is happening with climate change and also what can be done. And this had screens on all four walls, which made for a really engaging experience. Okay, so that's it for Mosca. We've spent a good three, three, four, five hours here. It's been really interesting to walk around each of the exhibits and we definitely recommend covering if you're considering it. It's even worth the trip across the channel to do so. It's very educational. It's a really good experience to 